MMORPG launches have always seemingly been rough, as well as their expansions. You name it, it's had its woes. Nothing ever seems to go off without a hitch. Usually it's imbalancing, broken quests, or silly things like, hey, the only way you can use your bank is close the bank and reopen it. Three times, up, down, left, start, select. Okay, maybe not that bad, but you, you get what I'm saying. Sometimes there are lag issues and disconnects. Uh, maybe you, you loot the corpse and then the, the, the actual items come to your bag, you know, 12 seconds later. Things that get fixed rather quickly, or at least within a short period of time. But overall, the game is decently playable. Typically, I'm a pretty optimistic person for gaming. I like to think that the devs are hard at work and doing everything they can, but at the end of the day, it's technology. And technology doesn't always work the way it's supposed to. Mortal Online 2 during the last 60 days of beta was a blessing for me. The game was scenically beautiful and the combat in my opinion was involved and fun. They called a hardcore immersive sandbox MMORPG and the immersive part of that is correct. My favorite part of it was the proximity chat. I had some really great conversations including rallying the fine adventures in Meduli up to fight off the Legion. There were PKing newbies outside in the graveyard. Onward! The Redcoats are here! We must fight the Legion! We must fight the Legion! I'm looking for the Legion. I must fight the Legion. Yeah, I heard they were outside. Do you know which direction? Oh, are you ready to fight with me? Together, we can defeat the Legion, Naive. Keep on back! Oh, there he is! Oh, god dang it! Gherkin! Galloway, Gherkin! Got him. Right in his head! <laughs> the red is friendly? Oh, okay. Sorry. Sorry. Apologies, Rokusho. At least I shot him in the neck, right? <laughs> the crafting is extremely well done and in-depth. I loved it because crafting gave you great useful items. Unlike most MMORPGs these days where it's almost a useless side game. But it wasn't super hard to get them either. More so it was difficult to find the right person that had a particular skill in what you needed crafted therefore forcing you to interact with your fellow players, which for some games is also lacking these days. The auction house and bank is localized, meaning the economy is different in each town you visit it. This created what I found to be an interesting and fun game of buying items in one town and riskfully traveling them across the world to another town to sell them for quite the premium, all the while hoping you don't run into a band of brigands of actual players that are going to murder you instantly and take all that wonderful items you just took from the other town. Which brings me to the PvP. The PvP in this game is a ton of fun. It gives that sense of adrenaline Ultima Online gives in the sense that you lose everything on your body or you gain everything on your opponent's body. In effort to save some time, I'm, I'm just going to spare you of all the positives because let me tell you, we're a couple minutes into the video and there are truly tons and tons of them. The good truly outweigh the bad. Uh, no, I, well, that that's not quite true, because the bad is really bad. In its current state, at almost two weeks after launch, the only form of playing is mostly that of in Haven, which is the newbie town. While I sat in Haven for the first week, keeping my Mr. Brightside hat on, I honed my dagger and archeries on zombies and bandits, gathered about 50 gold, even though I knew I could only take less than 10% of that with me to the mainland. I harvested leather and cotton, once again honing my armor training skills. I killed countless zombies and brigands for clade experience. But after a while, that small world became smaller, and smaller, and smaller. My only escape was that of the game locking up and me having to shut down the game and re-log back in. Why didn't I leave? Well, currently if you leave the new player area, you're put in a queue. It will start around position 300, let's say, and increase into position 301, 302, 303, etc. Some people have the exact same number in their queue. It's really strange. Reports of multiple days in the queue. The best suggestion for this? To buy a second copy of the game and have it sitting in queue while you play on another computer and on another account in the newbie area. The further reports of once you're actually in the game, extreme cases of lag, the same lockups from the new player area and disconnects. This right here actually points to 110,000 purchases of Mortal Online 2 on Steam. 
Albeit some of these are people buying multiple accounts due to Mortal Online 2 restricting to one character per account or the above mentioned. There seems to sit just under 10% of those online at any given time. Some of those are sitting on the login screen and some of those are AFK with the game open. Oh yeah, that's right. There's no automatic logout mechanic, so people just sit there, AFK holding their spot in game to avoid the queue again while they are either sleeping, at work, or playing another game. Yesterday, February 2nd, the mob server broke and all the monsters in the main world were just standing there. They, they weren't moving. So people were killing all the monsters in the game without any form of difficulty. This happened for quite some time, forcing them to do a 24-hour rollback in the middle of all this server queue chaos, pushing them down to roughly a 45% Steam review. Ouch. Currently, as I'm recording this, Henrik, the CEO, is going live on Twitch and speaking in terms of plans and answering questions. Sadly, it doesn't seem like any fix is going to happen overnight, but more of an in time. They feel, however, tomorrow a patch will be in place that once you're actually in the game, it should be working as intended as far as performance. I truly hope that Mortal Online 2 continues to deliver similar messages, and not only that, but that those messages actually follow through on their actions. I hope that one comes very soon about these terrible cues so that I can leave Haven and know that I'm not going to have to spend multiple days in a queue just so I can play the game. And then I'm going to have to leave my game on, AFK, just so I don't lose my spot. Yeah, pretty crappy. I hate to think that in a game of 110,000 purchases, that only 10% of those people can play at a time. I do, however, feel like in the future that this will all be behind us and we'll be having a great time playing Mortal Online 2 the way it was meant to be played. It's truly a fun game once you get past all these issues. I don't know if that means that they need to introduce more servers and bite the bullet and say it's not all going to be on one server. I don't know exactly what that entails. Whatever it is, I hope that they come up with something and that it happens fast. You guys let me know in the comments below what you think Henrik and the rest of Star Vault should do in order to fix this issue. Other than that, thank you so much for watching guys. Like this video, subscribe as I will be continuing to do more Mortal Online 2 con uh, content and as well as my other typical content over Ultima Online Outlands. Thanks for all the channel members, thanks for all the subscribers and Patreons. guys. Home Star Gaming out.